Orsin jas hun sich reaction this is Marcus Aurelius the man who solved the universe by General Horses yes Rome is back what is in the reaction it is yeah I would argue that Rome never died all the western countries are kind of Rome countries in a way they follow all things Rome in a way so yeah but I, I, I missed over this video man seriously I think he stopped making videos for whatever reason I don't know I hope he's fine but his videos were completely different <laughs> I still remember his Rome series what was a 20 plus videos god that was so good I still remember like I used to like wait for it like when's it's gonna be 24 hours so I can react another one it was so good I still remember the Aurelian obviously I remember a lot of names including Marcus Aurelius but I still remember Aurelian how crazy he was right just few years but he just crossed everything as bad as as bad as can be we have us watch it Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. If you want me to do more Rome reactions, I guess, I guess there are many channels, right? History of Civilis, I, I, you know, I did at a point, then stopped. If you want to continue all that, definitely comment down. Well, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, resuming more Rome videos. So, yeah, let's watch it. Stoicism takes the position that the wise man, the good man, the philosopher, is a man who lives in accordance with nature. Michael he fears only Sergei? abdicating so his moral grew, responsibility. So I don't know. He is not afraid of pain. He is not afraid of death. He is not afraid of poverty. He is not afraid of any of the vicissitudes of the human condition. He fears only that he should let himself down and that he should be less than a complete human being. Mm. That's something. The philosopher Marcus Aurelius was one of the founding fathers of Stoicism, and he is famous for his book Meditations. Really? The His idea of being a great man is kind of nebulous, but there is perhaps no single person in history who has ever been more deserving of that title. This is not a self-help video, I promise you that. But the philosophy that Marcus pioneered and wrote about can be an antidote to so many of the problems that we encounter in modern life. I want to show you why. Okay. Pax Romana. Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor who served from 161 AD to 180 AD. He was the last of the so-called five good emperors and served mm. over a period known as the Pax Romana, like in Komodo, or the Roman right? Peace. In fact, when Marcus Aurelius died, the Pax Romana ended. Aurelius, when he was emperor, was the most powerful man in the world. The Romans basically had no concept of the globe outside of their empire, so as far as he was concerned, Marcus was effectively ruler of the world. Mm. In this position, he could have anything he wanted. Precedent had been set. The life of a Roman emperor was basically synonymous with hedonism. That was what Roman emperors did. They indulged in money, sex, wine, and any other pursuit that even vaguely occurred to them. It was practically expected. So any Amazing. vice the mind could have possibly considered was directly within reach for Marcus Aurelius. He was entirely unbound by money, law custom or even ethics no one and nothing would stop him from re and i knew that when i was uh, you know when i t heard about him with the way videos and re did a research like imagine the, i mean imagine you are him right like the level of power comes from being a roman emperor like look look at romans how advanced they were even for the time like look at the 7th and 8th century of how you know anglo-saxons were like if you really compare rome with them like even a thousand years before rome feels really advanced in a way and this is like then, right? It's the second century or something, whatever, right? And Rome emperor had real power. Like, if you could do everything, why wouldn't you? Like, it's like way too tempting, isn't it? Like, you only live one YOLO, basically. And when you have something like that, and if you have some like uh, in your uh, whatever, you know, culture, or whatever religion, if there's something like, you know, reincarnation, whatever, maybe you let go of something because someone reborn again. I don't think that was the case with Romans. Right? They didn't believe in reincarnation, if I remember correctly. So when you have that kind of facts and you have everything, why wouldn't you do it? But th that was a surprising thing. Like he was like, and now it makes sense. Like why his father was stoicism. Realizing his wildest desires. But even in those limitless circumstances, Marcus Aurelius chose a life of virtue. He chose to be a good man. And not just in one instant or on one occasion, but every day for all 19...
the meditations is and i guess this was not the time where people actually gave it a thought of that like i could basically immortalize whatever i think right <coughs> uh was the soul last kingdom whatever where the soul like this anglo-saxon king uh forgot his name edward whatever from the 7th century he had this obsession like everything will die down but the you know words that you leave behind libraries and things that wasn't the case with him i'm guessing like there wasn't a big thing around this time right even though we use a lot of roman things nowadays immensely <laughs> I mean, I love this quote. Like he's kind of right. Like all the you know, all the animals, bees, and things like they're instrumental in ecosystem. If they don't do their job, you're all screwed. So why are you giving to your nature and not trying to do your job as a human? Yeah, this is some great quote. Marcus Aurelius believed in living in accordance with nature. By nature, Aurelius was referring to the plants and animals. Yes, but also to the natural order of the universe. Trees grow because that's what they're made to do. They grow as big as they can and become as beautiful as they can, not because they want praise or are looking for some external validation. But instead, they grow to be powerful and awe-inspiring because that's what they're made to do. That is the natural order. A caterpillar becomes a butterfly. A frail, featherless chick becomes an eagle, not because they want to, but because they are created to. In the same way, Marcus believed that the duty of a human was to fulfill their potential. He did not believe in accumulating things or riches, and we'll talk about that later, or being awarded or given accolades. Nature had made you a human. And with that mm. in mind, it was your duty on this earth to be the kindest, most virtuous human that you can possibly be. For Marcus, this is the pinnacle of human achievement and unfulfilled potential that was the darkest place you could sink to. I can see how this philosophy can have problems at certain places, can be limiting in a way. But as an overall thing, how people give into a lot of things, this is really good. Like, this would stop people from, uh, you know, doing something. I mean, there are people, right, who do things just because they're going to get praised for it. <laughs> like, okay, I guess you did something good, but your you know, target was wrong in a way. Right. I guess his whole thing is you're just like how, you know, bees, you know, do pollinating because that's what they're, you know, that's what they're doing. Trees are trees. You have your role and you should do it regardless of the result. You shouldn't do that for gold or money, shit like that. It's a good way to approach things. After all, you can't control anything else. You can't control what the world throws your way, but you can control how you react. And no matter what happens, a great person weathers the storm and lives up to their fullest most virtuous potential. Mm. That is your duty as a human. Yeah, so like I said, that could be limiting, but I guess it's based on how you interpret it, right? If you interpret it right, I don't think there's limiting factor with that. This is the way to approach, which is, which is like a good thing, especially in today's <clears throat> social media world. This is one of the key components that is needed, right? Because... I don't know. I, I don't know. There were there were lots of cases like people doing crazy shit just because they can be popular on TikTok and shit. Like, uh, come on. Marcus Aurelius was an emperor. Mm. So although he may have enjoyed sitting around writing all day, that wasn't his job, and he didn't write very much. He had to deal with a lot of things and a lot of people. Above all else, Marcus believed that evil, wicked, or just somehow bad people were simply part of our universe. Mm. Asking the world to not present you with these people would be like asking a vine to exist without thorns. Don't be ridiculous. There's simply nothing you can do, Marcus says. Bad people exist, and in your life, you will encounter them. 
Marcus believed in kindness though, and he believed that people didn't ever want to do the wrong thing. Instead, when people did the wrong thing, it was simply out of ignorance. You can try to teach these- Yeah, see, this is such a good thing, because recently I've also been thinking about like, nowadays people can basically chalk down things based on psychological problems. Some of the evil things, without naming too much and de going into detail, because YouTube will go crazy, uh, let's just say can be also chalked up to, I don't know, uh, childhood problems and how they've grown up. Now, that doesn't excuse their actions. But if the childhood were, was any different, they would be completely different people. So, uh, can you really, uh, you know, if you really chalk down everything to psychological issues, then it becomes a mental issue. Can you really punish people based on that? Uh, can you, uh, you know, really punish somebody because if nobody's evil, it's just like that's how they were mold to be. Right? Can you really punish them? So this, I mean, obviously our justice system wasn't uh, built to punish people. It was just built to see if somebody's fit to live in society or not. And prison was it's more like a rehabilitation system. And you know that that's how people get you know out of jail before their time. Like they they are fit for society now, something like that. But still, this is this is a really good point, and I like how he's also seeing it like that. Like nobody wanted to do evil like that. But, uh, you know, it just circumstances become like that. And evil people is going to be there based on accents or just ignorance. People, sure, but it's just not always going to be an option. So we can't control if the universe sends us the immoral or the wicked or the lazy. And if we can't also help these people, which usually we can't, we just have to put up with it. Mm. To do this, Marcus Kinda says, sense. you should look inward. He writes to himself, hey, Marcus, you've got faults too. Who are you to judge? Maybe you have different faults than these so-called bad people, but Marcus, you have your faults nevertheless. Imagine it's that Roman emperor has, has this kind of an insight, this kind of a thought. If you're an emperor, especially Roman emperor, there's a, it doesn't matter how good you are, there's a certain level of <laughs> ego comes with it. Him actually is thinking all these things like next, I, I don't think any emperor was like that. Not at this level at least. A different conversation on a different day, perhaps you, Marcus, would be the ignorant one. And Marcus, it's possible that you just don't understand. He told himself, hey, you can't even be sure that they are doing the wrong thing. The thief who the steals hell? to feed his family isn't wrong. You just don't understand. And often in life, you won't understand. And you won't know that you don't understand. Maybe so society is built in a way that the thief has no choice because his skills are not needed. That's not his fault. I don't know. I, there is no excuse of anything. I'm not excusing anything. But I, I, I see where he's coming from, right? Yeah. Don't judge. Ultimately, Marcus Aurelius believed that we were all born for each other. Over and over, he reminded himself, that is the natural order. A tree grows fruit so animals can eat. Animals die so that worms have food. Just like in the natural world, we are all made to help each other. That is, again, our duty. The only true failure in life would be to abdicate this responsibility. So Marcus, you better do it, and you better do it well. Future. Now let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to. With the same weapons of reason, which today arm you against the present. Hmm. Yeah, the fear of future is very real when you really think about it. Fear of you know, future really binds us and makes us inactive. We would have taken certain access, but future kind of, you know, stops us in that way. We all go through adversity, and Marcus Aurelius was no exception. But just like encountering bad people, Marcus realized that encountering adversity is simply part of the human condition. Yeah. Again, you can only control what you can control. So don't pray for bad things not to happen. That is a fool's errand, Marcus told himself. Those things are going to happen, and there's positively, absolutely nothing you can do about it. But what you can control, Marcus, is you can control how you react to them. You mm. can control if you are ready to meet adversity when it comes, and it will, Marcus says. You know that it will. When that day arrives, don't be sad because something bad happened. Don't feel bad for yourself. Don't mope. Instead, feel fortunate that you have the tools and the spirit to make it through unscathed. Marcus tells himself, bear these events as a brave man. Go through adversity with bravery and come out on the other side. 
When you do realize that this supposedly bad thing was not bad at all, it was simply an opportunity to persist, to rise above, to keep going forward. Marcus Aurelius says when these events come, don't complain. Act. Endure. You can either endure something or you can't. So what happens if and when that unendurable thing comes your way? Don't disgrace yourself, Marcus, he says. All men die, but not all men die complaining. Hmm. On wealth, there we go. Receive wealth or prosperity without arrogance and be ready to Marcus let it go. Marcus Aurelius was a man <laughs> of enormous wealth, but he did not believe this well, was... Wealth and fame, I guess... Uh, this could apply to fame as well nowadays. I guess fame wasn't a thing back then, but it could apply to fame as well, and that's a big issue in today. People letting go of fame can be really hard on them. Inherently a problem. Marcus did not vilify material possession like some other philosophers have throughout history, but instead he was cautious with his relationship to the things that he owned. Marcus Aurelius could have had anything he wanted, money, houses, art, wine, but he chose not to. Instead, he said, Marcus, don't dream of physical things that you want. These are meaningless. They don't fulfill your potential. Only you can do that. Reflect on what you do have and value these things. Remember how much you would want them if you didn't have them. But be careful, Marcus, he tells himself, not to value them so much that you would be despondent if they just disappeared. Mm. They don't matter. They're nice, but they don't matter. They don't improve you as a person. They don't make you more virtuous or more kind. Your potential is not accumulating things, Marcus. No, the human potential is higher than that. You must live in accordance with nature. Mm. It's surprising to see Marcus Aurelius writing all this, like, all of these things applies today. Like, he was a great philosopher in that way, right? When I didn't know Marcus Aurelius has these kind of things, it's surprising. Obviously, Doherty's videos are more sarcastic, so I guess I can't really see where he's being serious or not. But it's really surprising to see this. I guess I need to see more of a history of Civilius and things like that, uh, more details about Rome, then I will actually get the what is what. That will be more detail, I guess. I don't know. Soon we'll have forgotten Marcus Aurelius things spent all things a lot we'll of his forgotten time you damn <laughs> so much so that it would be impossible to make this video without discussing his opinions on the subject. And his views on death were simple. It's coming. People need to understand like how strong this is, right? About this death. is way, so much wait a bit. This is way too strong. Concept of death I think is the strongest things emotionally people, any humans can have. That's why all the other cultures have like after you know after death there is another heaven and things there is like an uh, you know reincarnation thing right rebirth thing people cannot understand like before you were born you were nothing like what does that mean no there are spirits you were a spirit no okay you, after you die you will be nothing like what does that mean no we're gonna go to heaven we're gonna go to we're gonna born again as a cow or something there's always is because people cannot like we see all everything tangible things we have this kind of a, a philosophical takes on things and our world basically tells us that life has certain type of meaning there is no such thing as ending like what does that mean like i'm not going to be a thing people have a hard time you know grasping that so this is a very strong one marcus aurelius spent a lot of his time thinking about death so much so that it would be impossible to make this video without discussing his opinions on the subject well they were getting stabbed left and, and right to make sense death were simple it's coming whether you like it or not. He tells himself time and time again, it's outside of your control, so don't waste your time fearing death or fretting over mortality. Just like nature has assigned us to be good, to help one another and to reach our fullest potentials, nature has assigned us to die. Death is a duty. So while you're here, live, be kind, be good, fulfill your role in nature, and then die because Damn. death is also part of that role yep there you go look <clears throat> death around this time and still today is inevitable so death it duty makes sense but if we know scientifically we can stop death because death is just like decaying of everything right we can stop that so there is a possibility in some scientists would argue like inevitability that uh, it's inevitable that in future people will not die right 
So in, by that point, we, uh, we hope to be multi-planted species, so we don't basically overcrowd Earth. So right now, this makes sense, but duty word doesn't make complete sense because we can stop death in a way. Scientifically, it makes sense on a theory, on a paper, it makes sense right now. We are kind of accumulating tools for that. I don't know how soon it will be. We might face hurdles and it might be even more than a century or it might be two decades from now, who knows. But it is possible. Marcus Aurelius, along with a couple other men, was a forebearer of the philosophy known as Stoicism. The Stoics believed in many things. Their school of thought covers logic, ethics, physics, and a whole lot more. Mm. But there is one distinction that lies at the core of the Stoic philosophy. The distinction of pleasure versus happiness. Mm. Money, fame, even success were external stimuli that provided fleeting moments of pleasure, but this wasn't happiness. Happiness was not so temporary. The concept of happiness was something more. It was a state of being that came entirely from within. It didn't come from being an emperor like Marcus Aurelius. It didn't come from any worldly things. The Stoics said to achieve happiness, you should live a life of virtue. You should continue to better yourself and become all that you possibly can. The only failure, the only true pain, the only true sadness, the only thing worth fearing is to let yourself down by not achieving your potential. Mm. By living life of virtue, I guess you remove any of, uh, you know, accumulating guilt of any kind, right? People have guilt all the time, however smallest. But if you live life of virtue, like that's going to lessen a lot. So th that could be one of the one of the key things, right? Uh, people, a lot of people dr drink basically to you know suppress this because all humans kind of have this. But if you live life of virtue, doesn't mean you're going to be guilt free of uh, smallest things, but at least you'll have stability of thinking like this is the best I could have done. You're living a life of virtue, so that is a good way to approach things. Right. And if you want to do what you are doing, right, regardless of if you're going to make more money or not, if you're doing what you want to do, you'll be overall happy rather than just, you know, doing anything to make money and make wealth. That's not going to last. Because and only because being great is your duty. Being great is in your very nature. Mm. That's it. All right. Yep, there you go. This was a good video, man. <laughs> this is like, when you're down, I guess this is a good video to watch now and then. Because, yeah, Marcus Aurelius' words can be immortal. You know, a few million years from now, this still would be relevant. So that is great. Well, well, that was Marcus Aurelius, the man who solved the universe by the channel Horses. First time reacting to this channel, apparently. There you go. If you like my reaction, do for like, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.